Hello, everybody, and welcome to More Mutants with Dan and Tori. <laughs> We're back. And We're better than ever. To... <laughs> yes, obviously. It's like we never left. We're still here for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we never left. <laughs> if you're here, thanks for coming back. <laughs> we really do appreciate, appreciate it. <laughs> that means you liked us enough to listen to a second episode, and we really do truly appreciate that. Yeah, <clears throat> it was it was a little rough start. I was like nervous for no no reason, but I feel good now. So yeah, because this is gonna, this is for fun, for hangouts, for good times. It's just for, it's just for funsies. So. Our- so last episode we said our favorite mutants change all the time they change so much that it's already changed for the new episode so so, yeah uh tori what's your who is your current favorite mutant right now my current okay who who switched out of your team with your leaders of nightcrawler and chamber (laughs) (laughs) oh my god um i don't know if he's a favorite yet but i'm really intrigued by this somnus character that is gonna be in the new marauders team uh which is cool um i love anything to do with dream powers um Mm -hmm. not comic books but my favorite book series ever the raven cycle by maggie steve fodder has a character that has the power to bring pieces of his dreams into reality um I was like obsessed with that concept and Somnus's powers aren't like that. He can like control dreams, but I just think dream powers are really cool. And, and he's another good looking queer character and we love it. Yes. I, I'm so excited to see what they do with it. I'm glad I, I want to say specifically, I am glad that this is hopefully knock on wood that this, this isn't going to be one of those like one and done characters. Like they said, when he came out in the pride issue in his debut, Mm -hmm. He will be coming back, and then we found out that Steve Orlando is going to be one of the people writing his new series, so that's exciting, because Steve Orlando does a lot of LGBT comics. Yeah, for sure. Half my stuff says Steve Orlando, that's how I know. (laughs) (laughs) We love, we stand. (laughs) Uh, I'm trying to think anyone else that's, like, not my usual... I mean, I'm still here for a hot dog. (laughs) (laughs) He's not expecting it. <laughs> he just no, was he, a badass. He's grown. He he's a good married boy now. Yeah, the whole thing is so weird, but also like <laughs> hilarious. Like, good for him. Mm-hmm. He knows every language, including the language of love. We <laughs> <laughs> What about you? Um, who are you? Who are you feeling right now? My my swapped out ones. Um, are gonna th- we're gonna take out North Star, Jean, and Rogue. So that's how much I love her. I already forgot. Uh, we're gonna throw <laughs> we're gonna throw in Rachel, Rachel, okay. Rachel Summers. Okay. Uh, I just she's she's grown on me a lot recently with um just still being there, being the Phoenix, being that person and then seeing her growth in X factor though. It was mm-hmm. like, she didn't have that much time in there. Like seeing mm-hmm. a new expansion of her powers was pretty cool. Yeah. I've that's been part of what's been so cool about like Krakoa is like, we're getting to see a lot of these characters like all together in the same time, like at the same mm-hmm. place. Like we've had like the whole summer's gray family, like mm-hmm. together, like, We've got Hope, Rachel, we had Kid Cable, now we have regular Cable, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Jean, uh, Scott, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> Emma. She's technically part of the family still, yeah, right? She's, she's the other she, woman. She, Auntie me. Emma. Oh, and then now freaking Madeline Pryor's back. Right. So. Oh, um, uh, I will. Alex is there, obviously. And then I'm going to throw in Jubilee as well, because... I love Jubilee. Always love Jubilee. She she gets that she gets the, the brunt of everything because of the 90s show. And then she didn't get that much time to shine in Evolution. But, mm-hmm. like, like I said last time, Curse of Mutants brought me more light on her. And then just seeing her adventures with Shogo and mm-hmm. just proving, like, you know, 
her powers do a lot more than just a little razzle dazzle. Mm -hmm. I will also be forever resentful of the fact that they like kind of got her and Chamber together there for a hot second, mm -hmm. and then they were like, and now we're just gonna never talk about Chamber again. <laughs> I'm like, no, do not use her as a plot point. Just Julie! put the. <laughs> There's things that I've seen of, I don't know what comics they are because I'm a fake fan sometimes, but <laughs> <laughs> I said it before anybody else could, so it's okay. <laughs> um, I've seen some stuff like where it's like, you know, her, her and Chamber obviously have that great chemistry from Generation X, mm -hmm. but it's like they just now, now kiss. It's like that meme, like with the two birds. Now kiss. Come on, just stay <laughs> together. Raise baby show go. Baby Don't turn Shogo. it into, like, the craziness that was Battle of the Atom. Just have a nice, happy life. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> that would be great. It's hope... never gonna happen. But no, <laughs> it not would at be all. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Before we dive back into the adventures of Krakoa, uh, <laughs> what else are you reading these days, Dan? Or what other comics do you love besides all the X-ness? All, all the X-ness. Um, I make sure that I have been, I haven't read it yet because I'm, I like getting, if it's a mini series, I like getting it all and reading it all at once. Mm -hmm. But I did get the, um, the Harley Quinn ish, six issue series that's supposed to continue after the second season of the HBO show. Mm -hmm. Um, cool. so I have all of those. So I finally got the six issue. So I'm going to just power through that and then anticipate season three. Um, anything young Avengers. Always and forever. Always forever, Young Avengers. I got all the Guardians yeah. issues that came, all four Guardians issues that came Same. out before they canceled it again. And I'm like, bro, this is like literally one of the biggest team of Guardians. So many good people and y'all going to cancel it again to just reboot, reboot it when I Am Groot Holiday Edition comes out. Because they heard that we liked it. Yeah. So they had to take it away. And anytime like there's something popular, especially with LGBT characters, they go, mm, better not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, I'm I'm the same. If if the Young Avengers characters show up anywhere, like I'm getting it because mm -hmm. yeah, I'm also obsessed with Young Avengers. Um, Runaways too. I absolutely love Runaways. Of course, it's canceled now <laughs> <So> <laughs> because I loved it. <laughs> the uh, most recent run of Runaways by Rainbow Rowell, I oh. was just like in absolute love with. And God damn you, Marvel! God damn you! Uh oh, Dan's pulling something out. I'm pulling out my latest batch of things. Oh, oh, that's one thing I've been getting that I actually really like. I've been getting a lot of the voices issues. Oh yeah, me like too. Marvel I've voices. I, they've, yeah. they've been so much fun to just see different stories of characters of different nationalities. Yeah, like, that's been really cool. I've really liked that a lot, and like so many different own voices, like artists and writers, getting to. To kind of do whatever they want. Like, mm -hmm. it's, that's been fun. It's like, we don't care if this will be, be retconned or not later. We get to show characters that people forgot about or people really miss mm -hmm. and just have fun with them in a short little story. Yeah, yeah. Well, how um, about you? What? Well, well you already right, said the runaways. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, um, right now, currently, I, I read a lot of stuff, but Saga is back. Holy I have, shit. I have the issue, and I'm mo mentally I'm not ready to read it, but also yeah. because I forgot I bought the issue the other day. <laughs> yeah, that, like, that last issue and then, like, a three-year hi hiatus was mm. rough. But uh, so excited that Saga's back. Um, first issue back was really good. Uh, the next issue, the cover is stunning. Fiona Staples is, like, one of my favorite artists. Um and yeah, again, Brian K. Vaughn, who I love, Runaways Saga. <laughs> I don't read much DC unless John Constantine is in it. Um, he's my like other all-time favy fave character. You'll notice a trend here with <laughs> like angsty British men. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I identify with them. <laughs> the, but um, in the best way, though. Yeah. Because <laughs> because who doesn't love? That's yeah. Words are hard. That's why we're on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we're great at public speaking. 
Um, we were killing I, it. I, I love those type of those British guys. That's like, damn, they're really damaged. I could fix that. I want to learn more about it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so speaking of good old JC, I've been reading uh, Dark Knights of Steel, which is like a twelve issue miniseries um, that's happening right now, and it's like it's like medieval like dc characters um and it's like its own little kind of like fantasy thing and the art is gorgeous and i've actually been really liking it and it has a lot of characters in it that i don't like or care about like superman and batman (laughs) 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 but like but john's in it so i had to buy it and uh and i actually really like it so you know unexpected unexpected happiness with batman and superman yeah because they have to be in everything (sighs) (laughs) gonna get some haters (laughs) so let's go ahead get back into it where we left off we were talking about the top 12 of um america's next krakoa superstars the quiet (laughs) (laughs) yes um yeah so we last episode we were kind of giving a really shoddy summary of <laughs> and powers of x uh, and I, loved, I loved your explanation though it's fine it, it worked tried. it got the point across and there was so much of it that we're doing a part two and today we're talking more about krakoa as we discussed before the mutant sovereign nation where all the mutants live now and gonna go more into depth about that so the you talked about the Quiet Council a little bit <clears throat> at the end of last episode, and the Quiet Council is basically Krakoa's government. Mm-hmm. And the original members of the Quiet Council were, of course, Xavier and Magneto. Moira is in hiding, basically. She's in this little, I think it's, is it called Nowhere? I don't remember. <laughs> She's in a uh, little, um- like her little like bubble basically underground bunker type place where like she can't be found um so the other mutants and x-men characters don't really know her involvement in all of this so xavier and magneto are like the faces of krakoa that's not gonna blow up in their face either yeah (laughs) everything's totally fine (laughs) what's the worst that could happen (laughs) and then the other members of the quiet council there's a lot of them there's mcfreakin apocalypse (laughs) okay (laughs) Uh, and Mr. Sinister. So that's Literally, great. We're starting it off strong. The first four people are. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's just room for every mutant here. <laughs> yeah. We got to represent everyone, including the very sketchy people. That sounds a lot um, like genocide with extra steps, people. <laughs> <laughs> We've got our hometown fave, Emma Frost, naturally. Mm-hmm. She can't not be in charge she can't not have a position of power like she's a queen obviously so there she is we have mystique Mm. nightcrawler my fave fun getting to Uh, see mom and son on it on a sort of team together (laughs) and like getting along they like back each other up a lot kind of Mm -hmm. on the, the quiet council um exodus who uh earlier we both laughed and were like neither of us know a goddamn thing about exodus so like <laughs> apologies to like the exodus fans out there all, all all five exodus fans were sorry no i'm kidding there's probably more <laughs> now especially with Kriko and X- house of yeah. x but i just know he's powerful and i'm not mm-hmm. just saying that because he's on the quiet council but apparently like he's super powerful that's all i know yeah, we've got good old Sebastian Shaw. Again, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> they uh, say have your enemies close or closer, <laughs> but like literally sitting next to you deciding the fates of everybody. I guess that's the closest you can get. We have Storm, of course, another queen. Has to, has to be there. Uh, the, Jean Grey. Sorry. Oh no, and the OG Storm. OG Storm. And Shadowcat. And then, of course, um, Cypher slash Hot Dog, uh, the voice of mm-hmm. Krakoa. He's, like, not really on the council, but he's just there to, like, translate for the island. And, like, if Krakoa wants to be like, I don't like this, mm-hmm. then Cypher. Be like, y'all ain't gonna do this literally on me. And Cypher's like, <laughs> nah, he don't like literally that. Literally <laughs> on me. <laughs> yeah, straight up. 
So that, that, that was the original Quiet Council at the setup of, of Krakoa. Um, a bunch of stuff has happened since this. Again, this House of X and Powers of X started coming out in 2019. So there has been a lot of stuff since then. Currently, Apocalypse has pieced out and has been replaced with Colossus on the Quiet Council. And Jean Grey has also left. And recently, Destiny got voted into the Quiet Council. Dun, 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 dun. You know what, though? That's that's probably one of the best people to have on there. Because mm. who better to tell you how something's going to go than somebody who see how it's going to go? Yeah, exactly. And so that was... Um, We talked about in the last episode in one of Moira's past lives how Destiny showed up and um, threatened the shit out of her, basically. (laughs) Uh, It was like, you better do right by mutants or I'm going to kill you. And then proceeds to kill her, but you know. And then proceeds to kill her. (laughs) But then um, since all of that has happened, Destiny was actually dead for a long time in canon. And Mystique had been helping Xavier and Magneto, you know, with Krakoa and doing missions for them. And her bargain for doing that basically was, you're going to resurrect my wife, right? (laughs) Like, Mm -hmm. I'm (laughs) I'm all in on Krakoa because you're going to resurrect my fucking wife, right? (laughs) Like, literally, Um, as the Anakin Padme meme for for two years, two and a half years, it's like, so you're going to resurrect my wife now, right? Yeah. I, yeah, I literally which, like, did all of this. I, you're going to resurrect my wife now, right? Yeah, like, who <laughs> can blame her? <laughs> um, but little did she know, Moira, being terrified of Destiny, had um, basically made it so that Destiny would not be put in the resurrection queue. She was uh, very since, anti-precog. Uh, yeah. And, and since... Uh, Dan hasn't read Inferno yet, so I won't spoil him, but Inferno kind of dives into like this predicament with like Moira, um, Mystique and and bringing Destiny back. But um, obviously we do know at the end of the day, Destiny is resurrected because now she's on the Quiet Council and Mm -hmm. Mystique is like, (laughs) mwahahaha. Mystique's just, I feel like Mystique and Destiny just going to live the good life now. They're like, we're back together as they finally should. it's been as they so, should destiny is one of those care one of the few characters that have when they died they stayed dead like yeah, there were like hints and time. stuff that they came back but she's been she didn't get the gene gray treatment she didn't even get like a tenth of that <laughs> yeah yeah and yeah and like you were saying like what better power to have on the quiet mm-hmm. council Though it is funny, though, because we see, like, through the vote for who's going to be on the Quiet Council, Mystique and Destiny definitely kind of, like, manipulate that a little bit because Destiny's kind of already like, well, you're going to vote me on. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> it's, like, it's like a very useful power, but, like, she's super threatening. <laughs> I mean, I would be too. Like, imagine how much time you had to prep when you saw stuff was going to be in the future. Yeah. Like, the... You you knew this was going to happen before you even died. So it's like, hmm, I guess I mm. could just plan all this. So when I come back, I'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the Quiet Council is the ones who decide, pr- like, approve everything that happens. They're the ones who banish Sabretooth for killing people and not stopping. Right. They're the ones who decide, like, what goes, what doesn't, what teams need to be made, what should be approved officially off, mm-hmm. off Krakoa business. Um, And then outside of the Quiet Council, um, they set up a whole bunch of new teams with like new jobs and some other positions. They basically name some quote unquote great captains who are kind of like war captains. And that's um, Cyclops, Magic, Bishop, and Gorgon. I love Magic. So get it, Magic. She's, she's She's been growing on that popularity train and she's definitely been somebody to keep an eye on because Mm -hmm. especially like right when it was like Scott leading the X-Men with Emma, the cuckoos magic and like that series. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was like the big like peak of her that she's now like one of those staple household names now instead of it's not just Colossus. It's magic too. She's just such a cool character and she's been getting to do like more and more stuff, which is cool. Like I really loved, um, there's been so many infernos, like (laughs) Inferno series. 
but yeah, I, I've liked all the storylines with her, like when they really got in depth with like Limbo and like Pixie and the Soul Shards and everything. It was like Magic, Pixie, Nightcrawler. That's my shit. Like I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've also got this weird situation with Black Tom. Uh, Tom is Cassidy's Banshee's brother. Is that a Black <laughs> Tom action figure? <laughs> Dan is holding up the Marvel Legends Black Tom action figure. Was it on sale? Yes. Did I buy it because <laughs> I've, I've started liking him more in the comics? Yes. <laughs> I don't... Oh, I can't stand him. <laughs> He's fun. <laughs> He's crazy. <laughs> Which is fun, I guess. <laughs> No, there's some other crazy people. We'll we'll bring them up in a little bit too. Yeah, but yeah. when and Black Tom is kind of like, I mean, I might be wrong about this because I'm definitely not a Black Tom expert by any means. But like, I feel like kind of like Cipher. He's one of those characters. They really expanded upon his powers and mm-hmm. like made them like capable of a lot more than like you would have thought originally. And he basically has this ability to connect with nature kind of and he's able to like link his consciousness with Krakoa with the island and he's kind of like Krakoa's security camera in a way like (laughs) Cypher is Krakoa's voice and Black Tom is kind of like the eyes and ears of the island so he's kind of just like shown very frequently like running around saying crazy shit talking about the veg which is like (laughs) the land (laughs) Okay, Black Tom. I just need you to stop saying veg. (laughs) Do me a solid. Uh, There's just like I know that's like a British term. There's just something about the veg that just like makes me cringe. Like I don't like that phrase. (laughs) It's like how some people feel about like the M O word. Moist. Moist. The way yeah. they feel about moist is the way, the way you feel about veg. That's exactly <laughs> how I feel. Yeah. Uh, we also have another really cool place, uh, the Crucible. Yeah, we have not talked about the Crucible yet. That's been intense. Uh, so yeah. basically, like <laughs> we just talked about last time how the five and Xavier with um, Cerebro were able to basically resurrect dead mutants and we have the resurrection queue which is basically like the you know the waiting list of people who still need to be brought back from the dead but we still had a situation you know from m day where the scarlet witch said no more mutants and a bajillion million people lost their powers (laughs) crazy we definitely have never heard that phrase before (laughs) yeah it's so crazy (laughs) which oh my god i can't believe i've like forgot about the scarlet witch but like i also love the scarlet witch i think yeah both do so (laughs) oh absolutely can't believe we haven't talked about that yet well because like she's always whenever she's related to the x-men she's never actually been on a team it's always like avengers this or that or the brotherhood like she's one of the very popular former mutant characters who just Mm -hmm. haven't been on the team. Like, I'm pretty sure even Quicksilver was on a team at some point. Like, I think he was on, like, X-Factor. Yeah, yeah. Like, the one with Gambit Um, and the cats. mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Gambit, the cats, cats, and Pietro. I remember that one. (laughs) I do. Uh, Okay, also, quick side note. Love Gambit and the cats. Like, they Mm -hmm. kind of keep bringing the cats back, and I'm like, I'm here for it. I I love married Gambit cats. Here for it. Yes. This was one one of the best things to happen pre House of X. Yes. Was Kitty and Colossus's wedding because it like finally right, separated right. them for the last time and it gave us the wedding we all really wanted instead. Exactly. Exactly. When we've we've talked about before, we're probably gonna have an entire episode talking about the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver and all the like fuckery with that. And mm-hmm. then also we're gonna we definitely plan on doing an episode about ships where we can talk about Gambit and Rogue to our heart's content. Cause yes, yes they're classic. Yeah. By back in the day yeah. when the Sky yeah. Witch was like no more mutants. It's just kind of funny because there's been so many characters that were depowered during that that like in the years since, because it's been God, like it's been so how long many since. years? Like 
15 years, like a long time. Jubilee, for example, some people have kind of like randomly gotten their powers back since then. But then here we see on Krakoa that like, well, there's still people who were depowered from M-Day. Or, you know, there's a couple of other instances too where um, characters are like permanently injured or, you know, have something else going on with them where they they can't access their powers or their body is like, you know, not intact or something. And for them, we have the Crucible, which is this crazy... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't even know what to compare it to. Like, uh, death co- Colise- Roman Coliseum type yeah, thing? Kind or- of- yeah, like a let, death match. Let them fight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where, like, if you want to be resurrected to get, you know, your body and your powers restored, you enter into the crucible where you basically ask someone to fight you to the death and kill you, and then you get placed into the resurrection queue so you can get your powers and your body back. And I think the first person they showed doing that was Arrow Melody Guthrie. Um, she is cannonball and husks one of their younger siblings and she used to be able to fly and then she got depowered during m day and lost her powers and um i think she's one of the first people we see actually do the crucible so that she can get her powers back Um, Mm -hmm. and it's completely legal on krakoa like yeah which is which is it's one of those things that you would think like oh well technically since they're depowered it's kill no human it's like no no they're still mutants they just Life happened, Cassandra Nova happened, Scarlet Witch happened, all those kind Genosha happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things happened that they either lost it or can- don't have it. And it's like, no, it's it's not fair to not let them have it. So if you give them that chance that they'll prove that they can, in fact, not be problematic and get their mm-hmm. powers back, then they have the chance. Like, um, yeah. And I want to say Excalibur, Callisto was doing so much in the comics without her powers, but it mm-hmm. got to that point where it's like, you know, if I have a chance to get my powers again, I'm going to be a lot more useful than how yeah. useful I am now. And we see like a little bit in the Way of X miniseries with Nightcrawler, where he's kind of examining like this question of like, which I really like that series, you know, your girl loves Nightcrawler, but um, mm-hmm. I liked that he was really questioning like a little bit what we talked about before of like, what is conquering death like mean for us? Like, what does that actually mean for us to be able to just die and be resurrected like it's nothing? And like, he feels kind of like some type of way about the crucible. And, <laughs> like, that's totally valid. Cause I'm like, on the one hand, I totally understand why like, if they're able to do it, why people would want to be resurrected to get their powers back. Like we just saw very recently no girl who was just a brain in like a little like bubble. Oh yeah. I heard about that. For the longest time. Yeah. Cause she had um like lost her body. She'd been like tortured and lost her body. And for the longest time she was just like a little brain <laughs> and like they just finally like, you know, put her in the resurrection crew and she got a body back. Um, but it was funny cause like, obviously she couldn't do the crucible. Uh, so they just <laughs> kind of like, they were just finally like, well, that was shitty of us. We should have resurrected you a long time ago. Like, they just said that. <laughs> but it just kind of made me laugh because it's like, you know, they have this gory, like, you got to fight someone to the death. And it's like, uh, or we could just humanely, like, <laughs> put them down kind of thing. I don't know. It, well, I feel like, and it sounds terrible because, like, that would be the 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 humane thing to do, and they probably mm. like that's too humane for mutants kill each other. So we got some shows going on. We can only listen to Dazzler singing every night, but so much. Give us death combat. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I guess, and then also we have to like remember it too. Like, look who's on the Quiet Council. <laughs> there, there's definitely <laughs> some people in charge at Krakoa that are like, "Fuck yeah, fight to the death." That's how you prove you're honorable and deserving <laughs> of like being resurrected. I wonder if like that's does that push you to higher in the list? Like, if you get somebody to kill you in com- in in the Crucible, does that push you up higher? Yeah, right. And there's definitely <laughs> been some questions of like you know, resurrection cue fuckery a little bit. Like, again, like mm-hmm. we talked about Destiny, um, and there's been some other characters. They also, like, were debating for a long time um, whether they should ever resurrect clones, like cloned Oh, people. yeah. That was a and, big one. Yeah. Uh, well, with Madeline Pryor and also with um, 
Scout, who is like the little sister clone of like X twenty three and oh, yeah. all of them, because um, she she died, and it was kind of like a whole thing where like they weren't originally going to resurrect her because she was a clone. So yeah, it's been it's brought up a lot of like really interesting topics that has been fun to like read about for sure. Absolutely, especially because it's like that clones are always weird, but as Marvel has shown over the years, just because you're a clone doesn't mean you're the same person. Like, mm-hmm. there's different personalities. Everybody l- goes through their different things, like Ben Riley, Peter Parker's perfect example, and Madeline and Jean are two completely separate people. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so along with establi- establishing this new setting for the X-Men, we got a whole bunch, all the teams basically got new lineups, new jobs, new titles. Every All the titles that were happening before House of X and Powers of X um, ended. And then we got all these new teams and all these new books. So of course we still have the X-Men, which are, you know, the team, <laughs> the mm-hmm. biggest team. And they are actually currently still based in New York. So they have this like insane Krakoa grown like treehouse situation in New York. <laughs> So they go back and forth between New York and Krakoa, but like it's the X Men, so they like they gotta still be in New York City at least some of the time, or New York, you know. And they've done some fun stuff with the X Men and having like the votes for who should be the new members of the X Men or like who should join the X Men. Like Marvel had like actual public votes. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally I voted like I, for Boom Boom. You did? <laughs> yeah. I think I missed the first one, but the second one. I I voted for Surge because of those new X Men Academy X days. Mm. I I voted twice in the new one. <laughs> I um on my first time I voted for Bling because I was like yeah yeah let's get some more LGBT on the main team and then the second time yeah. I was like give me Monet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Motherfucking Monet. <laughs> She's another one who popped out of nowhere. Like, not with not for me popularity. She popped mm. up as like a more prominent character leading into the Hickman era and stuff. It's like, I, yeah. I learned about you on Wikipedia, and I want to know more. <laughs> yeah, because like yeah, Monet was from Generation X, your girl's favorite. And that's uh, she was in uh, the series also with um, with Angel and Multiple Man. Yeah. Yeah, there was like a very short, short-lived X Core X Core, uh, yeah, yeah, series that um, it was like Monet, yeah, Angel, um, Madrix, Multiple Man, um, and then that like other hacker, people. one of the one of the girl that like does computery mutiny Sage? stuff. Sage, Sage, no, no, not um, Sage. And then, yeah, uh, X X X Core was like kind of a random little aside that happened where they were like. Doing weird businessy Krakoa things, business, businessy things, and I I didn't like it, but I liked the characters that were in it. So I that happens a lot for the for for a lot of these teams too. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> it's like, wow, I really like these characters. I wish I could enjoy the story. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Um, no offense to the X Core fans out there. <laughs> no, no, no offense to anybody because, like, obviously somebody liked it because it lasted more than one issue. Um, yeah, <laughs> I. You can tell what they really liked and what we really liked. Mm-hmm. Um. By what's still continuing, like X Men, yeah. X Force, Marauders, and anything involving a Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, always and forever. There's always going to be 58 like Wolverine things happening, and you know what? That's fine. We can. I've just accepted. It. He um, that the, he's the like he's the OG Batman Superman having to be in everything though. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, speaking of Wolverine. Um, you know, this current iteration of the X-Men, uh, I do like that the Wolverine on this new X-Men team is Laura instead mm-hmm. of Logan. So, like, Logan is still obviously around doing stuff, and he was on X-Force, um, and he's got all his own shit going on. There's, like, right now the um, X-Deaths and X-Lives of Wolverine crossover <laughs> happening. And <laughs> But happy for my girl Laura on the X-Men. Um, I believe the current lineup is... Cyclops, 
slash Captain Krakoa. We'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> um, Jean, obviously, Marvel Girl. Rogue. Mm-hmm. Um, Polaris. Uh, Laura Wolverine, Sink, another Generation X, Babu, all grown up, um, and Sunfire. Which Sink and Sunfire was like definitely because they weren't on the the polls; they were just going to be in the team automatically. Because you have Cyclops, Jean, Rogue, the, and the a classics. Wolverine; those are classic, classics, staple X Men. Yeah. But then they threw in Sink and Sunfire. Two mm. people of color with different powers that bring things to the table. And then they yeah. brought in Polaris to officially be on an X-Men team. Because I feel like she hasn't been on like the main X-Men squad. She might have been. Um, mm-hmm. Probably has, and I'm a liar. I know she was like in that one team where everybody wore a blue coat and there was Bloodstorm on there. But I don't know if that... <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite description ever. <laughs> But, like, I don't know if she was officially an X-Men before now, so it's pretty cool yeah. to see her, like, do that On whole arc team. of her intro yeah. coming into the comics as, like, Magneto's daughter, unsure what to do. I'm gonna mm-hmm, do a bunch mm-hmm. of X-Force, X-Factor, all that kinds of stuff, and now, like, yeah. X-Men, and... I do love her, yeah. I read some of it, and it was a little weird with how they tried to make it seem like how she joined in the comic, how she joined after the voting... Like, mm-hmm. it was, like, Jean Grey doing something. Jean Grey meddling. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that was weird. I remember that because it was, like, yeah, wasn't that at the Hellfire Gala where that came out? Yeah. Like, yeah. it didn't happen in the issues of the Hellfire Gala, but it happened, like, in the X-Men like series they t- after. Like they, yeah. They, like, talk about it. And, like, it, yeah, it was some weird thing where, like, Lorna was doubting herself and, like, wasn't she wasn't sure that she wanted to be on the X-Men and then Jean like hijacked her brain <laughs> and like put her on the team. She's and like, then, like, <laughs> was, like surprisingly cool with it. She was like, oh yeah, wow, that probably was for the best. And I was like, I would be freaking out. <laughs> right? It's like invading your mind and telling your past self and your future, your friend in the past and your friend in the future, hey, by the way, you've been... <laughs> Along yeah. with being a mutant. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, you know, Jean was like, it was kind of one of those things where Jean was like, well, like, this is what's best for you, slash, this is what you wanted deep down or something. And I was just like, and you're not going to let her figure that out on her own. You're going to literally <laughs> mind control her. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. She literally put Polaris in the like the room on fire with the dog. This is fine. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> this is fine. But I, um, I'm glad to see Polaris eventually did accept it on her own. And she's yeah. on the team because, you know, as soon as she was announced, that's when we all knew X Factor wasn't going to be a thing anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, let, well let's let's talk about x factor real quick Let, let's um, talk about x factor let's talk about because i also really enjoyed um x factor i feel like i have enjoyed most iterations of x factor honestly this most recent iteration of x factor was interesting because like they stuck with the kind of like investigative approach for um x factor and their job was literally to investigate um, the deaths of mutants and like confirm like who's actually dead mm-hmm. before they get put in the resurrection queue so they do, don't do something super fucked up like resurrect someone who's like is still alive somewhere um, like I just went off the grid for a month what'd y'all do why'd you make another one of me <laughs> yeah exactly um, and that's been fun because it's got some characters that both of us really enjoy um, and it was led by North Star. I will say, like, he was very, like, I, they're, they're sassy, angry gay, and then there's just really, really unnecessarily rude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I get a lot of the stuff was about your sister and twins and that connection. I get that. But I feel like the 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 intro was really rough for him to be considered the leader in that. But yeah, it looked like it was going to get better for him. Yeah, I feel like he had a little... <sighs> The series was kind of short-lived, unfortunately, because, again, Dan and I were enjoying it, so they had had to take it away. He did have a little bit of an arc where, like, it was kind of like, okay, he's, like, growing into being, like, a a good leader Mm -hmm. of this team. With, with, like, Polaris second in command to, like, it was Mm -hmm. kind of like, it's like watching somebody train 
somebody to take over their position. Yeah. Because yeah. Polaris was the like the the only like previous X Factor character to still be on the team mm-hmm. of the new iteration of it. Yeah, and this is before she got moved to the X Men, obviously. Because we on that on that uh, team we had North Star, we have um, Dakin, and we have Prodigy. I love Prodigy, and I love him with Tommy Speed. slash Speed uh, again. Young Avengers. We we're here for any and all. Any things Young Avengers. Young Avengers. The um, literal L- the the literal LGBTQIA plus team. <laughs> I need more speed. I need him like <laughs> um, involved more. Right. Like any t- the only time he's ever been involved besides Young Avengers has been anything involving the Maximoff family not just mm-hmm, wanda mm-hmm. and magneto it's like no it has to be the whole family otherwise they're not going to invite the forgotten child right exactly <laughs> and like listen i love oh. bye richter <laughs> I, I love an earthquake happen. <laughs> uh if you're only listening to this the richter action figure just fell off to the show appropriately. <laughs> he heard us talking about gay and x factor so he got excited <laughs> No, it's it's true though. Like I, I love Wiccan. Like, do not get me wrong. Mm. I absolutely love Wiccan, and I love Wiccan Same. Hulkling, of course. But I, I also really love Speed, and he really does get neglected. Like, <laughs> I feel like Wiccan gets so many opportunities comparatively to like do cool stuff and just appear. And mm-hmm. Speed's like, you know, yeah, he only gets shown for like usually like group like Maximoff family things, and then we got a little bit of him here in X Factor, and that's why they canceled. <laughs> And that's why they canceled it. Thank you, Mario. Um, I will. This is, we have to use reverse psychology. I have to like read these titles that I love and be like, "God, I fucking hate this." And then I go on forever. Say it out loud, we hate it. Give it a five star review online, but don't let them know. Yeah, secretly. Um, they also had. Like you already said, I Boy and Rachel Summers, but like yeah, I Boy and Rachel. They Summers. definitely did what like the Krako- They did the Krakoa effect to I Boy, which is they enhanced Hell, his yeah, powers. I love, yeah, the and- Krakoa effect. <laughs> yes, they did. They took I Boy's powers from zero to a hundred. <laughs> In the best which of again, ways, too. Yeah, is really cool because I feel like every time this has been happening, like with um, with Cipher, with I Boy, with mcfreaking black tom <laughs> they're taking these like kind of like at first glance lame powers like i boy if you don't know who he is he's literally a kid with eyes all over his body like then mm-hmm. and, like for a long time that was that was his shtick you know <laughs> and then it was like okay but like what if we really think about that and expand on it and so now it's kind of like you know i boy not only can he see everywhere but he can see in like all kinds of different types of vision like infrared x-ray like you know whatever and they really like exponentially like built on that and that's it's really cool is he a little weird about it sometimes yes but who isn't (laughs) (laughs) i mean who who would it be like his powers have been growing kind of secretly and then the other (laughs) characters are like uh that's that's terrifying and i'm always like don't worry about it (laughs) it's fine (laughs) And I I liked their focus on Aurora and uh, Siren for those series. Yeah. Oh yeah, Siren. Yeah, we kind of forgot about her. She was obviously there too. Well, she wasn't really like on the team. She was just like there. She was like involved. Yeah. For their ten issues that they had, they had started a story <sighs> about Aurora that went nowhere because um, yeah. it was supposed to come back later after they solidified things in Hellfire. They. <laughs> Um, went to Mojo World to go see Shatterstar mm-hmm. and plant that seed of, hey, remember Shatterstar? <laughs> yes. We we yes. want to bring him back. <laughs> the most Please. number one viewed on Mojoverse. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, they did the whole Siren arc, and I was terrified because I, while I was reading it, I don't like it when, like, I have that fear that something bad is going to happen to characters I like. So I'm like, oh mm-hmm. no, Rachel's going to die. Dokken's going to die. And he had so much progress in becoming like a good guy. And then yeah. North Star, and I was like, oh, fuck, it's Krakoa. Why am I Why am I scared that they're going to die? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's okay if they die. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's funny. It's like so far the only um, instance that we've seen of like preventing resurrection has been Otherworld, 
It, they mm-hmm. found if like if someone dies in other world, for whatever reason, it interferes with them being brought back. Like they can be resurrected, but like it. At what cost? Yeah, like their brain, mm. their brains aren't right. I don't know. <laughs> their brains uh, are on the rocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I got you. laughs> Um, uh, but yeah, I, yeah, it's kind of funny to think about. It's like, I mean, granted, like death in comics usually not permanent anyway, but like now especially, it's like the stakes are not quite as high. I mean, unless you're Uncle Ben. <laughs> yeah, because Uncle Ben's not a mutant, so Uncle Ben, <laughs> you fucked. <laughs> yeah. In short, I will say, just get the two X Factor trademark trade books if they're out, or get it's only ten issues, but it's a great time. Dakin yeah, had, I, da- I enjoyed it. Just all of them. And Dakin and Aurora will continue on into the new Marauders team, and Rachel Summers will continue into the new Excalibur team. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, I think um, the other, you know, big one has been Marauders. So the Marauders are a team that were led by um, Shadowcat, who we learned early on. For some reason, Kitty, so, well, she goes by Kate now. Kate Pride. Kate Pride. Um, Kate cannot pass through the Krokoan gates. She can't get onto Krokoa. And we're assuming <laughs> it's because of her power, her like phasing power, but they haven't like figured it out and they haven't worked it out yet. So basically she started leading this team, the Marauders, um, who basically worked for Emma. Um, Emma <laughs> runs what is now called the Hellfire Trading Company, which handles all of the exporting and trading and business part of the medications that um, Krakoa developed and like trades out to other countries. Um, and the Marauders kind of work for them, work for the Hellfire Trading Company, but also kind of, you know, they, they just help mutants who need help getting to Krakoa. They ride around on a boat. They're kind of like pirates. They're definitely pirates. They, 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 they're, they're mutant pirates. She, Kate literally wears a red, red, she, red okay, pirate coat. Okay, she goes, yeah. In the, in the early part of like Marauders, Kate leans hard into the like, I'm a pirate captain. Mm. Um, it's a look. I didn't oh. love it. <laughs> I, I love I, her, but I didn't yeah. love the look. <laughs> I, I I like I like the change that it was. I didn't like yeah. I like the initial with like her wavy hair and stuff, but like when yeah. the, the incident happens and so Kate obviously Kate can't go through the portals. Right. Um and it's the Hellfire Company involved with it, so you know there's Shady Shaw. Shady Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> um and then they make their white queen, their black king, and then they make Kate the red queen. And everybody mm-hmm. gets their bishop, call it a day. And Kate's like, yeah, oh, I get a bishop. Let me be literal. <laughs> yeah, let's get bishop to be the red bishop. <laughs> sure. Cool. Good Here for you. Get, give us more bishop. Fine. But yeah, so right. Shaw pulls his stuff. Spoiler alert. Kills Kate. <laughs> <laughs> and then... It's actually thanks to the lovely, the amazing, the talented, the wonderful Emma Frost (laughs) (laughs) that Kate's actually able to be reborn because not only could Kate, since Kate couldn't go through the gates, they were scared that like she wouldn't be able to be resurrected. And they went through like 13 eggs before Emma was like, let me mentally talk to her and get her to Mm -hmm. remember who she is to faith because she can't, everybody like expands through the egg like a chicken. Or any type of animal that comes out of an egg. But Kate had to be extra special. Yeah. And get phased through the egg, like, you know, with the help of Emma. And then the five's like, wow, this is really awkward because it's like the 13th or 14th one. So there's a bunch of just (laughs) random Kate eggs, like with dead Kates inside because they never. Do not like. (laughs) (laughs) So, like, Shaw had her. Shaw had her killed because he was like, damn, that's crazy that the Red Queen and White Queen are friends and I'm not friends with them. It'd be a shame, shame if we lost the Red Queen. And then that came back to bite him. And Emma's yes. like, I think not. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Just that story I mean, alone is like a great thing about Marauders. It's just like, yeah, here's more I'm, Emma being amazing. Marauders <laughs> is great. Really enjoy Marauders. Um, 
They also, for a hot second, had Storm. Mm -hmm. But Storm is also too important (laughs) to, like, hang around and be a pirate with them. So she has moved on to being the queen of space, uh, which we'll talk about at some point. Yeah. Um, And she uh, actually learned not to be like Jean, which is just being everywhere and helping. No, she's like, okay, I got to I literally have to step away. There's going to be a little going away party and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then we had some Iceman and Pyro action. I, Iceman's Pyro, great. Pyro is. See, I like the new Pyro. I love that tattoo on his face because I was like, oh, that's oh a really God. weird marking. And I was like, I oh. hate it. <laughs> I hate it. Now, Pyro uh, gets a huge face tattoo. And, um, <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> um, but I'm excited. I'm very excited for the new iteration of Marauders, which is starting next month. Um, mm-hmm. When they have. Swapped up the team a little bit, and we're going to have still Shadow Cat and Bishop, obviously, but we're getting Tempo, Somnus, who we talked a little bit about um, earlier, Psylocke, Dakin, and Aurora. So, like, that's going to be a good team. Mm-hmm. I feel it. And it's um, it's Psylocke, Quanin, because Betsy goes right. by Captain Britain now. They're two separate right. bodies, and they don't want to kill each other anymore. It's a good time for one yeah. of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks to the the resurrection stuff, we now have Psylocke and Betsy Braddock. Thank God. And Iceman's been like on and off having a nice relationship with Christian Frost. So like, good for oh my them. God, yes, I I love that. <laughs> I love like the... that. I want to see more of that. More Christian Frost. I I'm so scared for the gay the, the human gaze on Krakoa <laughs> because they can't come back <laughs> Kyle <laughs> <laughs> specifically Kyle like I'm oh, so yeah. scared because it's like there's so many X-Men relationships out there that always fizzle and don't end well but I'm really like keep Rogue and Gambit together keep yes. North Star and Kyle safe keep Christian yes. Frost safe whether he's with Iceman or not because I I like that Emma keeps her brother around and keeps him safe and but he's also when like he his had- own He had such a tragic backstory that, Mm -hmm. like, you know, he really deserves to, like, you know, just live his life now. So you do that, Christian Cross. Good for you. Good for you. (laughs) I was going to say, we can talk about X-Force because I only know. That's one of those. I love some of the characters, but I did not read any of it because I couldn't get into that type of art style. Art, Yeah. Yeah, X-Force. Still doing what X-Force has kind of been doing for a long time. They're kind of like a Black Ops type team. And for Krakoa, they've been kind of like a security slash like the CIA is kind of what they've been called of um, Krakoa. So we had um, Beast, Sage, and of course, Jean, who's like everywhere, kind of doing the intelligence part of that. And then we had um, Wolverine, Logan, Kid Omega, and Domino actually like going out on the missions and stuff like that which i enjoy all three of those characters i always love when wolverine and kid omega interact um, <laughs> they they've carried over that kind of relationship that they had in like wolverine and the x-men um and so that's always fun and what i liked about that series i'm a kid omega fan and i liked that he he got a decent story arc there where we really saw him grow up and kind of transition from being this like bratty shitty (laughs) kid kid, until you know more of an adult and like kind of come into his own and not with his powers because he's always been super powerful but emotionally which was like really cool i really liked that and like we got to see him his relationship with i'm the worst one of the cuckoos i can never remember like which one the cuckoo that he had a relationship with before (laughs) and i guess it's since she's alive and well they're having another relationship because kirko is filled with love and for everyone but good for them. They're having they're having a good time. New Mutants. New Mutants has been a fun book. I've been enjoying the art style in that book off and on. Um, depends on who's drawing it. Um, <laughs> it's had some really good moments. But what's been fun about it is it's been a lot of the like OG New Mutants characters like Wolfsbane, Karma, Mirage, Boom Boom, uh, Magma, Magic, Warpath. It has a huge cast. New Mutants has kind of been like a little bit less of a team book and kind of more of like a rotating cast of characters. The original team also had My Boy Chamber on it uh, and Mondo. 
And then, like, halfway through the series, they just, like, stopped including Chamber of Mon. <laughs> because they know. <laughs> they know. They're like, oh, wow, we, we lured you in with Chamber. We hope yeah. you enjoy this feature present. Where did he go? But, yeah, so they, they just kind of pieced out. And then the book kind of transitioned into, like, the new mutants took on this new responsibility of, um, they, they were literally like, hey, so no one is teaching or looking after the kids like the mutant <laughs> kids the mutant kids on Krakoa are just kind of running around and do, not doing anything so like <laughs> we're we're gonna take care of that and then the quiet council is like oh yeah you should do that <laughs> <laughs> so they start basically they become like mentors the kid x-men the student x-men and the group that we've been seeing a lot of there is um Cosmar Scott or not Scott Scout Rain Boy, No Girl, who just got her body back, um, and Anoli, who we talked about before, who's apparently forever a child. Forever child, like, Anoli. He's like starting over again as like a little baby. It's because they always need like a token young gay character, so they just. Yeah. I, I'm assuming that's why they're going to keep him young when reality is like he's been on an adventure. He should at least be a young adult by now because of like. If Wiccan and Hulkling yeah. can get married at this point and live their best life, Anul should be a young adult because he was in the same age range as them. Yeah. I might be saying it wrong. I've always said Anoli. I don't know if that's right. It it's might okay. I, I used to call him Dakin, and then people would tell me it's Dakin, so it's like oh. the same thing. What? Right, right into the podcast. Mutants <laughs> podcast at gmail.com and correct us. And then right into the shows to have those characters written in so we can see how they say it. <laughs> yeah. The other big team, we've got Excalibur, which has been off in Otherworld doing totally like unrelated things this whole time. But it's a fun mm. team because it's got Betsy Braddock, who's the current Captain Britain. Her brother, mm. Brian, is Captain Avalon now. We've got Gambit, Richter, Jubilee and Shogo. Gloriana and possibly Shatterstar. <laughs> they like just they got Shatterstar, they, but I don't know if he's like on the team or not. By the end of Excalibur, they were bringing him in because Rogue was up yeah. until like X Men because the X Men right, team Rogue decided to take before. like a nice member from every other team like and put them on the team. So it's like, oh, we know yeah. you like one of the big reasons you were reading Excalibur was for Rogue. Let's take her away. We know you're why you were reading X Factor is for Polaris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but but exactly. gambit's still on it jubilee and shogo the baby dragon yeah shogo the baby dragon because you know like, what i'm here for it i i like when they go to other world they're more like they get medieval costumes and like other world's fun other world's kind of just always been fun and like i enjoy it and excalibur has like now ended but we're gonna go into knights of x which I think is just basically like the new iteration of Excalibur. And I am excited for that too. And um, I, I just need Richter and Shatterstar. They are both on the team, which is great. They put I, I, Betsy and I Rachel on the it. team, which is great. Mm -hmm. They put uh, Doug Cypher's wife on the team. Right, right, right. And they have Shogo with no Jubilee. <laughs> so, like, irresponsible. <laughs> so like if shogo's just gonna be a dragon the whole time like if it's only gonna be in other world and they're not leaving like or I mean, if they I send guess if i had to pick between being a baby or a dragon i'm gonna be a dragon yeah <laughs> so, like, just do it shogo just do it maybe jubilee will go have her own adventure with chamber since neither of them seem to be doing anything in the new stuff <laughs> <laughs> Can we Maybe pencil we it in? <laughs> and while we're at it, let's get Angelo Espinosa slash Skid from the, he's been resurrected. Where is he at? In my in my mind, in my generation X soul, Chamber and Skin have fucked off of Krakoa. They're like on a road trip like <laughs> usual, and they're like, we don't need this garbage. <laughs> this too much drama. We're almost done, folks. We're almost done. We're at um, Hellions. Yeah. Hellions, which Hell is um, contested between us. Dan really enjoyed Hellions, I and it's my least favorite title. <laughs> See, so I the way I enjoy Hellions is because I'm like, this is Tell like X-Men's Suicide Squad. <laughs> it is. It's, 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 it's a trash team. 
of like <laughs> aside from Psylocke and Havoc, trash characters in my opinion. And th- it is though, like they're all terrible characters, yeah. and that's also why they're all on the team is because exactly they were all Maybe. literally like contenders for the hole with Sabretooth. Yeah, and yeah, instead of like that, they basically were like, let's see if they can redeem themselves. We'll put them all on a team together, and Sinister is like in charge of the they're team, like- and it's like. <laughs> What could go wrong? Yeah, like your first mission is... So they have Psylocke as the leader because she wasn't, as far as I'm aware, she wasn't the problematic character like the rest of them were at the time. (laughs) Yeah, it was more like Psylocke babysit these crazy people. And she's like, if I must. And then you have Havoc who just mentally is gone. He needs some help. You have Wild Child. Someone help him! (laughs) You got Wild Child who, like, you know, Age of Apocalypse era decided he's still around. Alternate universe characters are allowed. As yep. We can't say much because, you know, Kid Cable and Rachel, we love. We stand. We love. We stand. Um, Empath, who is a complete dick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he is the worst. And it's... He is the worst. <laughs> you know what? Like... I'm glad that he's kind. Of, I'm kind of glad he's still the worst. Yeah, <laughs> he's like just the worst. He's the worst, and everyone knows, and it's he's <laughs> fine. He's like, yeah, I'm the worst. And then you have Grey Cow, the token. I'm the strong character oh. who literally yeah. tells Empath in one of the first issues, "You keep doing this, I'm gonna kill you." And Empath does it again, and he kills Empath on the spot before the mission fucking starts. And that yeah, that was... it, is, it is very Suicide Squad esque when you. <laughs> Because it's like, they are gonna they can get resurrected. It's fine. And then yeah. you have Nanny and Orphan Maker, who Nanny, when she's... Her, Nanny's interactions with Sinister is what sends me. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> like, yeah, I have to say, for me, <laughs> Nanny and Orphan Maker were a big part of why I didn't like the book, because <laughs> they just make me uncomfortable and I don't like them. Oh, that's but absolutely like, valid. But they are, fu- <laughs> like, they are funny. Like, I forget Orphan Maker's there most of the time because that's, I mean, he's he's a powerful character who needs his mom. A mommy issue yeah. character, just put that to the side. We already got Havoc, so we don't need yes. another mommy issue. <laughs> it's a hot mess. But Nanny just, how much she hates Sinister mm-hmm. is, Relata- is the goal. Relatable. Relatable. <laughs> <laughs> she hates him, doesn't trust him, and just the comic panels that come out of that. <laughs> Well, I mean, the first, like, their first mission is to go kill Madeline Pryor again. <laughs> and then that whole... Yeah, Al- <laughs> because Alex doesn't have enough problems. <laughs> and now she's back. I can fix her, says man who cannot be fixed. <laughs> so I saw that shit online and it made me die. And I was like, I have nobody to send this to. <laughs> Accurate. Accurate. Uh, but... Yeah, and then Nanny getting drunk at the Hellfire Gala, breaking a bottle and cutting Sinister. Oh my god, what a mess. (laughs) (laughs) What a mess. But don't worry, at least Psylocke is on another team, so... We don't we don't yeah. know what's gonna happen to the rest of them, because Hellions is over, but... Yeah, Hellions has ended. We'll see what happens. Um, and then the last, like, sort of team we have is Sword, um, which per usual, they are... In space, doing <laughs> space stuff, which is literally what I wrote in my notes. <laughs> um, and they're led by Abigail Brand, space. <laughs> and they've got a lot of people, again, it's kind of like unclear at times, like who's, who's here? Who's yeah. who's on this team? Who, but we know WizKid is there. Yes. And I love WizKid. Wiz- so that's been really fun. WizKid seems pretty fun. I have not don't know much of him outside of S.W.O.R.D., um, mm. But I do like that they are very, very prominent on the team, as yeah. well as Manifold. Yeah, Manifold is really cool, too. I like Manifold a lot. Um, yeah, and then they've got a couple other, like, random people who show up from time to time, like Peeper, Fabian Cortez, who I think is now not on the uh, team anymore. He was on it for literally, like, three issues. Like, and then yeah. the gala happened, and they were like, mm, we got better things to do than deal with your existence by, at least you're not yeah. dead again. <laughs> yeah sword has been interesting because it's been like very slow kind of coming out so there haven't been very many issues yet mm-hmm. and um and there's been a lot of space in between each issue 
<laughs> which is that- why like my I didn't write like anything about sword because <laughs> I'm like it's in space and it's been all right. It's it's yeah. been one of those things that it, like they their issues are literally like come in do a thing that's with stuff that's currently going on, done. Yeah, come in. Well, <laughs> folks, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of completes our rundown of the establishing of the island of Krakoa, and kind of where the X-Men are starting from these days in the comics. Mm -hmm. Um, We're definitely going to talk about other crossover events and other storylines in the future, but we kind of wanted to just cover this important, huge change in X-Men, you know, that's been the jumping off point for like everything else that's happening after that. Um, So we hope you enjoyed our... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> crazy summary <laughs> it's it's definitely um been a, a good time to get into x-men especially being fans of the movies the tv shows the limited kitty pride series from the 80s this is a good time to get into the <laughs> comics because everything kind of is retconned where your future knowledge is valuable but if you know nothing about them then it's a great time to learn more yeah true well Well, it's been real (laughs) it has been leave comments down below of the proper pronunciations of dakin and anole (laughs) (laughs) yeah argue it out how do you say these things (laughs) Thanks so much for listening to that episode with us or watching it, whichever uh, streaming way you've done it. Um, If you like this content and more, go ahead and give us a follow, a like, all that stuff. And stick around because on March 31st, we got a special surprise for you. Yeah, we would love to see you at our very first ever live stream on Twitch, more underscore mutants, uh, on March 31st, Thursday night, 7.30 p.m. We're going to be having our very own Hellfire Gala event. We're going to be recapping all the important stuff that happened during the Hellfire Gala in the comics. And most importantly, we're going to be ranking the best and worst dressed at the Hellfire Gala. We've been taking a a look at all of the different looks. So get dressed up in your Jumbo Carnation finest and join us for a Fashion (laughs) Police-esque episode (laughs) over on Twitch. Uh, Again, that's going to be March 31st, 7.30 p.m. More underscore mutants on Twitch. Thank you so much. And remember, follow us here on social media. Smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs> okay, thanks. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. <laughs>